the summer of 1916, over 3,000 South African soldiers were sent to capture and hold the most difficult spot along the battlefront by the River Somme. Against them stood 7,000 Germans. The place they had to capture was a small indigenous forest, but it was key to the entire line. The South Africans took the forest and they held it, even after the enemy rained down artillery fire at a rate of 400 shells per minute, or nearly seven high percussion explosions every single second. It was cold and wet and miserable, and it rained most of the time, both water and death. began one of the bloodiest battles of World War I, a dreadful slaughter of epic proportions. For days on end, both sides turned their artillery guns upon the small, easily identified target and literally rained artillery shells down upon it. The Allied and German soldiers in it heard trees crashing all the time, and some of them burst into flames when rockets struck them. survivor wrote, Delverwood has disintegrated into a shattered wasteland of shattered trees, charred and burning stumps, craters thick with mud and blood and corpses, corpses everywhere. In places they were piled four deep. Worst of all was the lowing of the wounded. It sounded like a cattle ring at the spring fair. Within a day or two, all the trees in what had once been an entire forest had been reduced to matchsticks and splintered fragments. There was nothing left at all. In a battle so desperate that the lines were blurred, the fight turned to bloody hand-to-hand -to -hand combat with bayonets, rifle butts and bare hands. And towards the end, both attackers and defenders lay dead one on top of the other. The place it was Delville Wood became a lunar landscape. The South Africans succeeded in the end, but at a cost that would stagger even the most hardened soldier. Of the initial 3,155 men, 2,536 were killed or wounded and blown to shreds and buried beneath the falling dirt so that some of them remain lost to this very day. For them it was a loss of 80% of their fighting force. An entire forest of men had been lost in a matter of days. As soon as the Germans saw us, they opened fire, and we replied immediately, and here our losses were heavy, chiefly because our chaps were too eager and through not keeping their heads down. While the Germans found they could not shift us with rifle fire and machine guns, they tried their artillery and trench mortars on us. I think they must have brought every available gun that they had to try and flatten out the wool and kill every living thing in it. The Battle of Spionkop was only a flea bite in comparison. All the time I was there, the bombardment never ceased. It was a continuous roar all the time. High explosive shells, Jack Johnsons, which kill within an area of 200 yards. Acting Sergeant John Webb Adams, 39 years old from Mayfair, Johannesburg. Of the entire forest that was once Delville Wood, only one single tree survived. It was a hornbeam tree. Not one single oak 
or any other tree survive the deadly rain of artillery fire that fell upon the small forest and its defenders for days on end. The old tree still stands as the sole survivor, with its trunk now gnarled and knotted, where it bears testimony of the many shrapnel wounds that it suffered during the battle. In Delvil Wood, in Delvil Wood, the German foe in thousands lay, and no man's land, with British blood, ran red as wine that summer's day. We'd sworn to take it, and we would, God help the Bosch, in Delvil Wood. To Delvil Wood, to Delvil Wood, we faced these fire and forced our way, to where his grim machine guns stood, and where he fiercely turned at bay. We'd sworn to beat him, and we would, we'd turn him out of Delvil Wood. In Delvil Wood, in Delvil Wood, as inch by inch the ground we gained, with bullet, steel, and smashing butt, we fought and fell till few remained. But Boer and Britain steadfast stood for freedom's sake in Delvil Wood. In Delvil Wood, in Delvil Wood, mid splintered trees and shattered wreck, from morn till night we still made good against shot and shell and massed attack. We'd sworn to win so firm we stood, or died like men in Delvil Wood. In Delvil Wood, in Delvil Wood, the shattered trees are green with leaves, and flowers bloom where cannons stood, and rich the fields with golden sheaves. Sleep soft, ye dead, for God is good, and peace has come to Delvil Wood. <laughs>